This is Quillbot. It might not be as well known as some other AI writing tools like Grammarly, but it's secretly becoming one of the best writing tools with AI. I've been testing it for the past few weeks and I love how it helps me research and write faster. So let me show you what it can do. Thanks to Dex for sponsoring this video. So Quillbot is probably known as a um, paraphrasing tool, or at least that's how they advertise themselves when you search for it. But this kind of confuses me because it can do much more than just paraphrase text, especially after its integration with AI. Their new feature, Quillbot Flow, is my favorite so far because of how it streamlines the writing process from researching to finalizing a draft, but I'll get to that later. It's available as a browser extension, a Microsoft Word add-on, a Mac app, a mobile app, and a web app. As a browser extension, it basically does the same thing as Grammarly. It gives you suggestions on how to improve your writing and highlights any mistakes. Same for the mobile app. It's a keyboard for iOS and Android that highlights errors and gives suggestions for alternative words and phrases. Uh, this is cool and all, but what surprised me the most was their web app. Creatorboard comes with a bunch of essential writing tools like a, a paraphraser, summarizer, grammar checker, translator, plagiarism checker, and so on. Most of them are free and easy to use. You just paste the text or upload the document you want to check, and it will do the rest. So even if you don't use the other features, you can still get a lot of value out of it. But let's get to the best part, which is Quillbot Flow. Quillbot Flow is essentially an AI-powered word processor. It's like Google Docs with AI and um, extra features. Um, it's not complete yet, but I think what they're building is amazing. So let's see how it works now. When you want to start a new writing project for a blog, a research paper, or an article, or whatever, you can start by creating a new document in Quillbot or import the existing ones from Word or Google Docs. But if you don't want to start from a blank page, it has quite a few templates you can choose from for different purposes like academic papers, emails, newsletters, resumes, blog posts, and so on. You could even write a follow-up email or cold email. If you're looking for a way to quickly write messages to your contacts or friends, dedicated tools like Dex can help you save time and manage your relationships easier. Dex is an all-in-one relationship management tool that lets you keep track of people in your life and helps you stay in touch with them. I've been using this tool for almost a year now to record my interactions with friends and connect with new people. What I really like about this is that it automatically built a unified list of all the people you know across different platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, X and so on. And this way you don't have to switch between different apps to find the person you want to reach out to. And then when you meet someone new or find someone you want to connect with, you can directly import the information to your decks from your browser. Then you can send a message to anyone on your list easily. If you're having trouble, drafting the message, its AI may be able to help you out. I find it really useful that I can see the past interactions with the person in one place, which helps me remember what I've talked about with them. Also, you can set reminders to reach out to someone to have a catch up or check in with them. This is actually my favorite feature because it's so easy to lose touch with your friends when you are busy, but this can help you avoid that. If you want to try Dex, you can download it from the link in the description. You can try it for free to see if you like it. Okay, back to Quillbot. Aside from the template, this smart start is pretty cool too. We just select what you are writing about and the type of document, like an essay, blog, or a research paper. And uh, you want to be specific here, which allows it to generate a better result. Once you enter the topic, it will create an outline for you. I find it kind of meh, and uh, I much prefer writing from scratch, but you know, I can see how it can be useful for people who want to save time. So the best thing about Quillbot Flow for me is this sidebar. As far as I know, there are few or maybe no writing tools that let you research while you write on the same screen, which makes it really convenient. There are two ways to do this. One is ask a question. You can just type the question you want to know and it will browse the web and give you a, a summary of the search results. You can directly insert it into your draft or see the sources for more details. To do that, just click the get content button this will open the full article as well as the uh, highlights of the article and the keywords. If you want to read everything, you can click the view full article button. If you find something useful, you could um, highlight it to add it to your draft, paraphrase it or summarize it. But I actually quite like how it automatically gives you the highlights of the article. It's a, a quick way to find some information without having to read the, the whole thing. Also, if there's a specific keyword you want to follow, you can select that from the list and it will show you the related parts of the article. 
If it's going to be useful, you can just copy and paste it into your note so you can see it again later. And also make sure to add it to your source list so you can find it easily later and cite it. By the way, you can toggle between academic and general search results depending on what you are writing. Obviously, the academic search results consist of academic articles and research papers. Another way to do the research is just like a normal search where you enter a query or a keyword. Unlike the first method, it's much faster because you don't have to wait for the AI to generate a, a summary. Now just go through the articles and see if there's anything useful. Once you finish collecting sources, you can see them all in the sources tab. If you need to read one of them again, just click on it. Or if you need to cite it, click on the cite button. Of course, you can add more sources manually or just by pasting a link to them. The notes tab is the place where you can keep your ideas and thoughts, but it's just a simple notepad and it can be pretty messy, but I will talk about that in a minute. After collecting enough resources, you can start writing your first draft. Here are some tools that will help you write more efficiently. One is flares. This is really useful when you get stuck. If you click on the flares button or enter slash, it will give you a few options to help you get back on track, such as complete paragraph, add example, or add counter examples. The results are of course not always perfect, but they at least give you a starting point or something to work with. You could also tell it what to write about if you want to be more specific. Flares is not the only thing that can help you write better. For example, typing plus plus will automatically generate a few suggestions for the next line of text. You can choose to accept or reject them. I don't use this often, but I love how quickly it works and how it can save me a lot of time. What I find more useful though is the inline suggestion. And this will give you a suggestion for what to write next in real time as you type. It's like an improved autocomplete. If you like the suggestion, you can just hit tab. This has been saving tons of time. There are lots of small but really handy tools like these. You can even get synonyms for words just by clicking on them, which I actually use quite often. Okay, once you finish writing your first draft, AI review might come in handy. You can ask it to give you general advice to improve your writing or to give you more specific advice on improving clarity or finding missing information. Or if you have something else in mind, you can tell it to give you feedback on that. After the review, just go through each suggestion. Some of them are all right and you might want to go with them, but others might not be helpful or even hard to writing. So you need to use your judgment. It seems like this feature is doing better so so it's not perfect, but it's still nice to have. All right, before publishing or submitting your work, it's always a good idea to check for plagiarism, especially if you used AI. Now, uh, this is a premium feature, so you need to pay for it, but it's only um, $9 a month, which I think is fair and affordable. Plus you get to use some other premium features with it, like premium recommendations and the tone insight. I wouldn't say these are essential, but if you spend a lot of time writing, it might be worth it. By the way, I think they are building a similar share feature for Google Docs. I mean, it kind of looks exactly the same, right? Um, you can share a link to the document and choose who can view it and what they can do with it. Right now, it's still under development, it seems, but I know I will love it when it's ready. So there are lots of things I like about this tool, but as always, it's not perfect. One thing that bugs me a little bit is that sometimes it cannot open some web pages or display the content properly, which isn't so bad because you can just go to the website directly. But another thing is that when you want to save a, a part of an article to your note, it doesn't give you an option to do that. They are on the insert to the draft paraphrase or summarize options. So you have to copy the text you want to save and paste it into your note. But then you kind of lose track of where each text comes from, which can be a big trouble later on. Also, this note isn't great. I mean, after pasting some text and uh, writing down a few thoughts, it gets very messy. There's no way to toggle between different sections or uh, paragraphs. So you have to scroll through the entire document to find what you're looking for. I wish it wasn't just a giant notepad, but instead had a way to structure the content. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I really appreciate your time and support. Right, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.